Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mary Mahan. I am the Deputy Chief Executive of Manufacturing Northern Ireland. You're all very welcome here this afternoon. I um, want to welcome all our companies and we want to um, particularly welcome all our speakers and presenters um, from Queen's University um, who are going to present this morning or this afternoon. So the webinar itself will last approximately one hour and um, we will be recording the webinar and we will endeavour to send you out a copy of that recording to all those that have registered um, a copy of the slides as well can can be sent out as well. Um, what we the format of this morning or this afternoon is that we're going to hear from each of um, the speakers and then we're going to have a question and answer session um, at the end. So if you but please do feel free to pop in any questions in the Q&A chat function or outside the Q&A um, box and then we will go through those during the Q&A session. Um, We'll also give you contact details at the end on how you can follow up with Queen's if you're interested in taking one of the placement students. Um, so this afternoon's webinar is going to give you an insight into the Masters in Mechanical Engineering with Management, um, which is being taught through Queen's University, and the opportunity to find out how you can facilitate an industrial internship. So you're going to hear about the course content, student profiles, and steps to enable the placement. So I'm going to welcome our first um, Professor David Rooney, who's the Dean of Internationalisation at Queen's. Um, Professor David, you're going to just do a formal intro on behalf of Queen's, and then we're going to have the formal presentations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary, and hopefully everybody can hear me okay. So as uh, has been mentioned, my name is David Rooney. I'm uh, the Dean for Internationalization within the Faculty of Engineering and Physical Sciences. And I actually have my, my colleague here with me, um, Professor Wei Sha, who's the Dean for Postgraduate Studies within the faculty as well. And you know, our interests here are really about supporting uh, you as industry. And I'd like to thank you all for, for joining us here today to hear about the opportunities that will arise or are arising from our MSc in Mechanical Engineering with management, and also to show the support that the faculty and institution then has and been able to support the students and support regional industry. And I've got a couple of my colleagues here today who will discuss the course in detail. So Catherine will come in later on and to talk through that. And then if you have any concerns around any of the issues with regard to visas or compliance and so on with regard to taking on international students in particular onto placements within your own companies, then we have our, our colleague from um, Senior International Advisor um, in Compliance and so on, Helen McBrenn, who will then take you through any of those issues as she, as she covers through this, as, as she goes through this her own presentation as well. So over the next little while, we will go through the course, we will talk about the opportunities that, that can come from that and, and we see the opportunities then for being able to take on some students and support, support industry across Northern Ireland and beyond. If I can go on to the next slide, please. So this is slide just shows you the kinds of numbers of students that have been coming through um, over the last few years onto the MSc in management and mechanical engineering with management. And you can see here that it has been growing. Um, in 2017-18, it was very small. We were just starting off, but then in 2018, it started to grow much more. And then in, from 2019, we've got a fairly stable in intake, you know, around 40, 45 students a year. Many of those students are in fact international. We've around 30 international students coming in at the moment. And many of those students are wanting to stay on and avail of the opportunities within the UK to take placements for several years uh, within, within companies. So they can come in for an internship for a period of time, but they can in fact stay on for much longer period of time if, if that is of mutual benefit to both the industry employer and to the student as well. But I'll, I'll move on to the next part then, which is just to let Catherine then uh, take, uh, take you through the actual programme itself. Catherine. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, as Dave says, for taking the time to join us to find out more about our course and particularly um, the internship side of it. Um, I teach on it and I'm also employability lead for the school.
Catherine, do you need, do you, do you want to move on to the next slide? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yep, thank you. Yep. Um, so really, um, just to give you a little bit of background about how this uh, course came about, it really uh, was designed in partnership with industry to fill gaps that um, employers felt was maybe there um, post-graduation and um, really to support students, particularly in a bit more of the business side, um, engineering systems and that area. So we work closely with our industrial advisory forum, uh, which comprises approximately 12 companies from across Northern Ireland and the UK. And it really was very useful um, to work with them and we continue to review our courses in line with them. Um, really, this was to ensure the quality of our gradu graduates but also that uh, the content was relevant and um, that we were proceeding with and remains relevant and that it is beneficial for both our students and industry. So how we do this is in a way that is reinforced by sort of traditional lectures. You can't get away from some of the theory, but we supplement that with interactive workshops and tutorials and um, hands-on experience um, in the labs. And also um, our modules are um, co-delivered with industry experts from a range of engineering sectors. Next slide, please. Um, to break it down exactly into what we do, we have two core streams within the MSc. We have the mechanical engineering and then the business management stream. And these are specifically divided up as well. For example, if we had somebody who's currently working in industry um, who wanted to advance um, their skills but didn't have the time maybe to commit to a full MSc or diploma, they can take one of our streams which consists of three modules and they'll get a postgraduate certificate in that area. Now the engineering stream really looks at the competency and skills um, around the latest advances in engineering disciplines um, and that focuses on sustainable energy, manufacturing technology and computer aided engineering. So within our sort of CAE, um, it's looking at your integrated simulation tools and um, the look at the FEA of complex problems and also um, dabbling a bit in the optimization strategies and implementation. Our Mantech um, takes them through assembly processes for for example, in advanced welding and also digital manufacture. And on the sustainable energy side of things, um, that's looking at renewable energy systems and power storage management. So a good variety, um, but each one uh, quite focused in their area. So now just moving on to the business management stream. Um, this is a bit more on the sort of creative commercial um, skills that uh, somebody needs to really go out and maybe be an innovator, entrepreneur or industry leader. Um, we often see a lot of students have um, the ability, but maybe lack the confidence or haven't really got to grips with the wider business side of things. So this stream consists of um, engineering system management um, and that specifically looks at lean production and quality and cross cost prediction and management. Within that too, they do um, a sort of two day project management workshop. On the business management side, that is our sort of wider business uh, structures and um, innovation entrepreneurship, looking at kind of the money side of things from a management accountant and economic planning. Um, within that, we also uh, bring in a barrister who specifically focuses on um, law and ethics with that um, and what it is to be um, an ethical engineer and how to perform professionally um, within the workplace. And finally, that uh, module within the stream is looking at research and data analytics. Um, really, this is to hone um, a technical uh, report writing and getting to the sort of bones of that, doing it in a concise way and how you communicate um, your findings uh, to all sorts of audiences. And um, the second half of that module is specific on data analytics and statistics. And we take them through R and how you use and apply that and really critically analyze your data. Um, throughout all um, our modules, there's an array of assessments. It's not just, none of them have a final exam at the end. So we're trying to shift a little bit more this reflective on how you work, reports, presentations, communication with other um, teamwork, um, it's really to enhancing those soft skills uh, that are really required to excel in the workplace. So now we're just going to move into sort of how our programme is structured in terms of timeline. Uh, so all top modules are upfront and they take three per semester and the students must complete and have passed all six modules before they move on to the third semester where they do an individual um, research project. Um, that's really taken together all the modules they've worked on, but these 
um, projects are selected from a list that are compiled by the academics within the school. But we also have a number of industry um, linked projects that have been proposed by industry partners um, within who work closely with us or who have an idea and want it explored. Once the students have passed then their project, um, they're eligible to go on to their placement, um, ideally 12 months, but a minimum of nine. And this comes um, after all the taught material and project has been completed. There's two reasons for that. Um, firstly, if a student has been unable to secure a placement or needs to transfer off the internship uh, route for some reason, they still graduate with their MSc. Um, it also means that um, after successful placement, there's no requirement to return to uni for further study. So if a company wants to employ um, the student for longer, that now is an option that isn't disrupted by return to study. So just moving on um, to give you a bit of an idea of our student profile. Yep, so um, our course is not specific to mechanical engineers that are coming through, we are open to um, graduates from STEM backgrounds. Um, so for example, this year we have material science graduates and um, chemical engineers, um, and the majority do come through from mechanical or um, say product design backgrounds, but there is variety in coming in and then it really enhances um, the areas that they look at within engineering modules that we provide. So as David said, we typically have 35 to 55 um, on the programme and about 70% of them are looking for internship. And the majority of those who do enrol from the start on our internship programme are international students and they're mainly from India with a smaller number coming from China. And the programme is accredited by IMEC-E. So this is just to give you a very small snapshot of where some of our graduates have ended up after um, completing their course and um, into a variety of different roles, project management, um, materials and process engineer, logistics engineer, um, supportability engineer, um, we have design as well and um, also packaging engineer and um, they've all been very successful and are excelling in where they go so it really opens them up to a number of opportunities post-graduation. So really specifically on our internship programme and the requirements for that. Um, in university, while they're still undertaking their um, top modules, uh, they are supported. We're very lucky to have an in-house placement officer, Lindsay Holland, who supports both our undergraduate and MSc students when they're looking for placement. We also have a dedicated module that all students are enrolled in. Now it is optional, um, but we have a very high retainment on this and students do find it very beneficial. And really it was designed to enhance employability and support them in their search for internship. So it's delivered through blended learning methods and um, we have lectures, guest webinars, there's one-on-one -on -one coaching and um, there's lots of resources provided to them and activities on Canvas or VLE. And really uh, initially it's looking at supporting them um, to find an internship. So really where do you look and what's the most effective way to search and then the steps in applying for your internship. Specifically workshops on um, CVs, interview preparation, psychometric tests, and then assessment centers, which are becoming increasingly common now, and looking at their own skills, self, self assessment, what are they bringing, but also the areas that they want to move into and develop. And um, they also get very detailed feedback on their CVs, um, which we hope uh, helps them in their application and that's transferring through. And then we have additional things like their professional behavior while on placement, digital citizenship and what's out there about you, and also health and safety at work um, and what they should expect going into the workplace. So in terms of our requirements to approve a placement, um, there's a number of things that we look at and have to go through before we can sign off from a school perspective. Um, firstly is the duration. Um, the students, ideally we would like them on a 12 month placement, but for our accreditation and the module that they complete while on placement, um, it has to be a minimum of nine months within the company. And they're eligible to go once they've completed their taught elements um, at uni and have passed those. So throughout the placement, um, we are very much hands off to your employee, you manage them, um, but the students and the companies are supported um, by the school internship and employability program. 
In terms of salary, um, this should cover the students' living costs, and particularly in Northern Ireland, we're looking in around 19,000 as a minimum. And for the roles, we're very fortunate, the background um, of the course and the students that come through that, um, it's largely open to uh, management and process activities. Um, so these are roles that um, have a bit more meat on the bones as such. Um, so going in and being and pick and place in the production line isn't the type of role that is suitable to these students. We want to get hands-on technical experience, but this can be across a number of areas. Um, so design, manufacturing, in your R&D department or quality, um, it could be project management or process optimization. So there's great variety in what that can be applied to. It just has to be at that slightly higher level. While on placement, like any employee has a line manager or supervisor, so it's really important that our students are appointed one. And this person um, needs to be able to comment on the student's work and progression throughout placement. Um, we require the return of a short uh, for mid-placement assessment and also another one um, at the end of the placement. Also, that person would be responsible for signing off the student's placement portfolio that they must submit at the end of their time with you. And really that portfolio is to document um, key activities that they've worked on each month. Uh, the reason we require it to be signed by the company is firstly, that you're happy with the content and that's released to us. Now, the only person really that reads it is the marker and the project team. Um, but we do appreciate the students in the past have worked on projects that have a confidential nature and certain data can't be released. So it's important that the company is happy with the content of the report. Also for us, it's an indication that you're verifying that the task that the student has outlined in the project they've worked on, that they actually have, and it is their work that they're presenting. In terms of international students, um, there's an additional uh, form that has to be submitted to Queen's every two weeks just to sign that um, they're in continued employment. And this is part of a visa requirement. We do this with the students um, while they're taking their top modules um, uh, to sort of prove engagement and that they are attending their course. And then this just has to continue on placement. But again, that's for um, the international students only. So to give you an idea of the typical roles um, that our students have gone into um, or kind of job titles that have come back and we have approved, um, as I said earlier, the areas are very vast. So we have design engineers, um, assistant controls engineer, leans transformation, um, technical sales support. Now sales role wouldn't be suitable, but more on the technical side, um, providing troubleshooting and um, technical drawings um, and reports to the sales team briefing them, that type of thing would be more suitable. Um, design process improvement, uh, team production engineers, uh, or process engineers. So we do have great variety and many options and we will work with you if you're unsure about a job role or want to develop one that would be suitable for a placement student. So really, um, we see it as an advantage um, to local companies to take on one of our students. And if you move to the next slide, <laughs> right, there is not a sales pitch, these are good students. Um, but they really are energetic and they're enthusiastic with a strong desire to gain industry experience here. And really that's to apply what they've learned so far, but also enhance the skills that they have developed. Most of our uh, internship students are international, mostly from India. Um, but with that, a lot of them are common with some previous engineering experience that they can utilize. Um, the student visa covers them to work uh, while they're with you for the duration of their placement so the company don't, aren't required to sponsor the student in any way and now there's a new two-year UK post-study visa so if a student has really excelled in your company and has been a great fit and you're keen to keep them um, now you can do this for uh, up to an extra two years um, post the end of their placement year again the company do not have to sponsor this. Um, and yeah, I just really wanted to highlight um, our placement program is, even though our MSC is five years old, um, this is only a third year of students going out, to give you a flavour of um, the local companies that have taken on um, and had very successful uh, years with our students, um, with Seagate and Polyglyphs, Stryker, Camlin, 
decom engineering and um, donite plastics uh, so there's a good range there as well and we're really hoping that we can expand this and um, we have strong networks and uh, good relationships for our undergrads and now we want to really highlight and uh, get the same established uh, with our MSc program. Right so in terms of timing um, we do, we're a bit tight um, in terms of our current batch who started last January and have just completed their taught elements. So their cutoff for sort of finding the placement is the 18th of February. Um, so I do appreciate that turnaround is very tight between now and then and may not be feasible. However, we have our September intake and our program usually does run September to September. So we do have a batch of students who are currently um, looking for internship and they'll be eligible to start from October 2022. Um, they've already started to look and are applying. Um, they're a little bit outside, I think, because I know a lot of companies are looking for summer start students. But if you could consider even, um, do you have the capacity to extend that and take on somebody in October or maybe have a different role completely because they are coming off, uh, they already have their graduate degree behind them. And the cutoff for them is currently the end of November um, for securing their placement. So we do have two sort of cohorts at the moment, one coming to the end and the other is ready to go as well. Catherine, could I just, just clarify there? So the ones that you're looking for now, you, you are recruiting for 12, are you, you'll be recruiting 12 companies to take on students before the 18th of February? Um, yeah, um, but if a company has multiple places as well, um, that is something um, that is an option if you're in a position to take more. Um, for example, we have some students in this cohort who have secured uh, two or going to one company. So okay. that's an option as well if the capacity okay. is there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And um, just as a reminder in sort of in school context, um, Lindsay is our placement op uh, officer who directly handles internship opportunities. Um, Dr. Jamie and Quinn is our program director responsible for our MSc and I am our employability lead if you would like to follow up in any way after this. Thanks, Catherine. That was really um, informative. You covered so much. And I, th I think hopefully, you know, if there are questions and answers, we can answer those um, later on. So yeah. I'm now going to introduce so a really important um, aspect of this, but given the fact that over 90 percent of the students are um, mainly from India and some from China. So companies would be really encouraged to know the Queens do look after all of the, the visa um, sponsorship and all the kind of headaches are around that area and so we now have Helen McBrin who's going to talk us through that. Thanks Helen. Um, thank you very much Mary. Um, hi everyone my name is Helen McBrin and I'm a senior immigration advisor in the International Student Support Department at Queen's. I'm going to chat to you today about the student and graduate route visas and I'm going to start with the um, student visa and I'll discuss this in relation to um, specifically industrial internships. So if an international student is undertaking a two-year master's course with internship at Queen's such as the MSc in Mechanical Engineering with Management, an internship. They'll require a student visa. And just to note, some of you may recognize this as a tier four visa because this is what the student visa was previously called. So a student visa um, is sponsored by the university and permits the student to come to the UK to study. But if the course includes an internship, this is also permitted under the student visa if it's an assessed and integral part of the course. Um, so when the student's visa is granted, it's granted for the duration of the study and the, the internship from the outset. Next slide, please. So if as an employer, you want to confirm if a student visa holder is permitted to engage in a full-time um, internship, you can ask for a few documents to confirm this. And the first of these would be a letter from the university confirming the internship is approved. And it also will confirm that it's an assessed and integral part of the, the course the student is currently studying and it will provide a start and end date too. 
And then from the student, you can request their biometric residence permit, their BRP card. And this will confirm that their visa is valid for the duration of their studies. And as well, you can ask for a passport. And these documents, the combination of them, will allow the employer to complete a right to work check. So the student visa permits full-time study, or sorry, full-time work and um, during the internship, and there's no working hour restrictions. And some employers will come back to us and, and have noticed that the student's visa states 20 hours work restrictions during term time. And I just want to, to clarify, um, this does not apply when a student is undertaking an official internship that's an assessed integral part of their course. During this time, they're definitely allowed to work full time. So throughout um, the internship, um, Queen's remains the student's visa sponsor. And um, we make a report to UK Visa and Immigrations, uh, Immigration and we advise them that the student is working um, as part of their course on an internship full time at your organisation. So this confirms that they're legally allowed to work full time. And as Catherine mentioned, we monitor um, the student's attendance. Um, it's a, a requirement as, as we are the visa sponsors. So we monitor the student's attendance um, at the placement as well. Next, thank you. So now I'm going to chat to you about the graduate route. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so the graduate immigration route is a new post-study work visa, and this was launched in the summer of 2021. So it's very new. And it was a real positive step when the UK government introduced this, um, as it enables international students to work or look for work after their studies for um, two or three years. Um, sorry, yeah, um, the work could uh, can be um, in any sector at any level and there's no minimum salary requirement and this isn't a sponsored route so there's no need for um, employer sponsorship and students um, can apply for this visa when they've successfully completed all their degree studies. Next slide please. Um, so just to say that the cost of this visa is £700 and then the students or graduates, I should say, um, pay for the immigration health surcharge as well. And it's £624 per year of the visa. Um, but there's no employer costs involved um, in this application. The, the graduates pay these fees. So the graduate visa holder um, will be able to work or look for work as I said in any sector and this is at any level also and they can also engage in self-employment activities. Um, the graduate visa um, it can't be extended and a graduate can only apply for this type of visa once they can't apply for it multiple times but if they do find a suitable role they can switch into the skilled worker route um, from within the UK when they hold this visa. Next slide. Thank you. And this is just a, a summary really of some of the key points about the, the graduate route. So um, employer sponsorship is not needed as it's an unsponsored route. Um, students can or graduates can um, work on this visa for a maximum of two years if they've just graduated from a master's degree and three years if it's a PhD degree. Um, there's no employer fees associated with sponsorship or this visa application and there's no minimum salary other than the minimum wage uh, or job skills level. So if a student is undertaking a one year internship under a student visa and applies then for the graduate visa successfully, these two visas together permit you to employ the student and then graduate for a total of three years before employer sponsorship is required. In year one, the university is the student sponsor, and then in year two and three, the graduate is um, holds a graduate route visa, which is an unsponsored route. 
Um, so this allows employers um, to see how an employee develops before they have to commit to visa sponsorship. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm now going to pass back to Mary. And David, sorry, do you want to summarize? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll just jump in. So thanks, thanks Helen. That was that was very very informative, um, and thanks Catherine as well. Um, and thank you, thanks everybody for listening. Um, maybe I'll try and summarise a little bit um, for for everyone. Um, what we've heard here today is the is the course. Um, what we've seen is that the, it consists of a split between mechanical engineering type modules and management modules. We have um, energy. We have um, manufacturing technologies, computer-aided engineering, and then moving into the management side, which the course has been blended with. We have systems management, data analytics, and, and business management. And that's all been set up to try and address the vacancy rates, particularly where the engineering is moving into the management and the leadership associated with all of that as well, because we do know that and recognize that there are problems in being able to fill those vacancies within that space. Um, the course itself is accredited by the Institute of Mechanical Engineers and hopefully you know you will see where that course could add value within your own organizations. Through the graduate route and the visa route there is a real opportunity for basically bringing in people uh, to be able to fill gaps within the various different organizations. Um, that allows the university to work with industry, at least in the first year and beyond, um, if necessary, to support you know, gaps and to fill those with, for instance, in internship positions, which we've been talking about today. So that first year would be done in partnership between the industry and the university, and a lot of the risk would, in fact, come then onto the, onto the institutions of Queen's, uh, would make sure that uh, the compliance is being addressed, uh, and, and if there are issues, obviously, we would then work with you in order to be able to resolve them. But at the same time, we do recognize that any training of a student coming into an organization is an investment. And again, the graduate route opens up the opportunity for students who then come in and succeed and do well. And we've heard stories of students who have gone in to placements and, and internships and, and have done very well. That investment then can also be returned in terms of the fact that those students can stay on and stay on as a graduate on an undergraduate visa for a period of two years and the company does not need to sponsor. So it is a real good opportunity to find good quality people to be able to come in and, and fill those gaps for up to three years before any serious involvement from the industry has to come in in terms of, of, of getting those uh, visa issues sorted out. And there's expertise within the, the call here and the panelists today to answer any of your questions, both in terms of visas and also with regard to the course. And of course, I'm going to say now, and I'm sure Catherine would agree, if you do want to come in and speak to some of those students, then I'm sure we would be very open to that. There are a few students who are available right now in terms of any eminent gaps that people would have and that you would like to fill. So please do come and speak to us. So. On that note, I'd just like to thank Mary for, for hosting the meeting today and for you all for listening. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, David. I'm just going to, we're just before we go into the Q&A section, I just wanted to really say about that graduate immigration route. Um, it certainly is really good news and welcome news, um, particularly because the UK, the new UK immigration system makes it quite difficult for companies to take in um, international um you know, recruit, recruit. So I think that's really, really beneficial. And it'd be interesting just to find out, you know, how companies engage with, you know, those graduates from other courses within Queen's um, to maybe try and encourage them to stay on. I think it'd be useful maybe, David, to give a little, you know, just to just to let the employers know that, you know, that that route is available and, you know, possibly how we can make those, facilitate those um, graduate um, placements um, I suppose better in the, in the future um so i want to introduce as i said this sorry david do you want to maybe say a few words on that oh no i was just i was really to support it if, you, if if the companies do have any questions or anything with regard to uh you know bringing on graduate placements or, or internships just do do get in contact with us you can see louise louise's contact details there and, and there are obviously others within the faculty and, and wider institution who are, who are willing to help you know, that, that that's great and the fact that that is all taken care of on, on behalf of Queen's as well is, is really really welcome and um, so as I say this this 
webinar we're jointly um, co-hosting this with our colleagues from mega and i just want to introduce dara cullen um, who is the chair of mega and he also is the managing director of edge innovate um, we're going to maybe facilitate a question and answer session but i just want to ask dara i suppose this is real music to your ears in terms of the recruitment difficulties that certainly many of our manufacturers are experienced in trying to recruit new staff and you know with it being probably the, our number one challenge at the minute to get um people into manufacturing so i'm sure this is is a, a, a welcome um route yeah absolutely mary uh, it, it's not there's going to be no single thing that comes about that's going to solve all the problems in, in terms of people recruitment and every every bit small and large is going to help so uh, absolutely it's, it's a positive uh, move from queens and uh, we're very much looking forward to getting involved okay um i see maria and um, maria who um manages the mega program is doing a, a terrific job ray has asked um a question here in the q a are students willing to travel throughout the whole of northern ireland and have they i.e have the access to a car um a lot of the international students probably don't have access to a car um so but we do find they are willing to move um to take up a placement um for example we had somebody moved to dungannon and further afield um you know they're not just sort of wanting jobs in and around Belfast um, but if the question is then when they're in the role if they're prepared to travel um, I do believe it's a degree of that they will do it they'll be keen to do that but um, again they they don't seem to have their own cars because they've only just arrived. Okay ho hopefully that won't be a barrier to them getting out you know around the region as well ho hopefully not um, so I suppose just a question as well, you know, in terms of those application timelines and the deadlines, I know you said that, you know, you had a, an intake, um, you know, you were looking at applications from companies by the 18th of February for 12 students and then again in the, the autumn. Um, so, for example, the, the intake that you'd be taking in now, when would those placements start? Um, so daily we'd like them to start uh, in March. Um, the reason for that is just around our accreditation and the minimum amount of time that students have to complete on placement um, in order for them to pass the module. Um, and that also avoids them running to the end of their current visa as well um, and to give them time if they are applying for the graduate route visa to apply and um, secure it. So March uh, would be the start date for that. Okay, so I'm assuming there's a pretty quick approval process or turnaround in terms of the company um, expressing an interest and then filling out the necessary paperwork and then getting approvals from Queen's. Yeah, I suppose what the challenge at this point um, would be in terms of timeline, the company's recruitment process to begin with. Um, I'd like to actually bring Lindsay in um, just to talk about um, the approval side of it from a school perspective. Um, there are a number of documents. Lindsay, do you want to? Yeah, no problem at all. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Lindsay Holland. I'm the school's placement officer. So ultimately, I do have responsibility for working initially with the students uh, on their placement approvals. Uh, but some of that documentation then does go back to the employers. Uh, so typically, they'll need a contract of employment or some form of terms and conditions document that lets us know and lets the student more importantly know you know, their payment, their typical hours of work, holiday entitlement, just the usual, you know, start and end dates, things that we need to be able to confirm and feedback into the university um, for students who are involved in off-venue activity. So uh, anything really that you would put in a standard contract or terms and conditions document for uh, a standard employee is what we would really expect for uh, a placement student or a, a, an intern. Uh, that applies equally to some form of job description. Uh, we will accept a job advertisement if one has been used, sorry, to, um, you know, to recruit the student in the first place, but that gives sufficient detail around the type of tasks and, and duties that the student will be asked to perform uh, when they're in the post. And again, that's just for quality assurance and to give us an idea exactly what they're going to be doing and that it's fit for purpose and um, applies to the level that they're at, the course that they have just completed uh, and taken into consideration perhaps any previous industry based experience that they may have had. There's health and safety, there's insurance indemnity. Um, again, these go back to the employer, uh, just again, so that we can have that quality assurance around those particular themes and to make sure that the, that the student is going to be protected in all of those ways. 
Uh, then the, the checking inside, you know, that's something else that I have responsibility for. So it's some paperwork for the student, some early assessments, you know, to establish that things are going well uh, in the first months of placement. And then we branch out, um, as Catherine has already explained, to communicating with uh, a line manager, mentor, supervisor, whoever you as the company feel is, is fit to oversee uh, the, the placement side for the student. Uh, we then begin the process of communicating with you. It is only two assessments, but we conduct a visit where possible, uh, an in-person visit. COVID obviously has had a little bit of an impact on, uh, on that, but I'm, I'm due to do visits now coming up next week for the current batch of undergraduate students who are on placement. And I've been very pleasantly surprised how many companies have come back to say that they would be happy to welcome me back on site to do an in-person uh, catch up with both the student and, and line manager. So that's been, um, you know, very welcome from my point of view. And where we can't do that, we do uh, one of these really, just a, a video link up and a, a Zoom or a Microsoft Teams call. So it's, you know, it's really just to make sure that everybody who's involved in the process is happy with how it's going. Um, pleased to say that, you know, in the vast majority of cases, that is uh, the situation that we find ourselves in with our uh, undergraduate and MSc students who take on a placement. So long may that continue. Um, but yeah, approvals can be as, as quick as we as we need it to be as long as the the various documentations uh, that we ask for are in place and I will work with you um, in a quick fire manner if that's required if should anybody think that they maybe would like to take one of the MSc students uh, before the, the deadline uh, you know for this current cohort the ones who are looking to start around about March. Sounds good Lindsay sounds fairly straightforward and that you do you know that hand holding with the actual placement student then as well is really important you know that you know I'm, I'm both the company as well would uh, you mentioned the slides they would assign a mentor so it's good that they would get that full experience and you said treat treat them like a junior engineer I think Catherine you, you had mentioned that in your presentation because you know really the, the course does provide you know the the masters it, it does provide that full gamut really of um of um of teaching and learning which is it's really 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 interesting um just a question as well um on my side you'd mentioned about a research project and dissertation that they complete at the end of their first year and there's potential opportunities for companies maybe to have to kind of maybe shape some of those dissertations if there was particular issues or problems that maybe companies were if you could maybe just let it tell us a little bit how companies again might get involved in that. Yeah, um, so this is there's different sort of streams um, in which they can. So we have companies that would directly work with us on a research basis anyway. So we spin out from that um, on our website under um, how you can get involved. Um, there's links to this on it. So our main contact is Dr. Owen Cunningham, and he will initially discuss with you kind of what the requirements are. Um, there's a tiered structure in terms of contribution and then how that works um, within the school and with the company. And um, from that, it's just to get a gauge for what you're after in terms of the project. And also he kind of outlines um, the expectations to make sure that they're managed um, because of the timeline. It's quite a condensed timeline as well. And we do this with our undergrads. So the first will be to make contact to outline um, kind of the area you want investigated and then to come up with a project description and key deliverables. Um, that then is sort of circulated within the school. If you don't already have a student or a supervisor identified, um, it's then sent out to our academics and Owen then tries to pair a suitable supervisor academic with the project itself. Um, and then it will be opened out to the cohort and students will be given the option to review the project description and potentially select it. Um, so yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, that is, I can see potential um, companies, particularly maybe in that area of sustainable sustainability and carbon yeah. reduction and mm -hmm. manufacturing tech and all of those different different areas that you've mentioned, Catherine. Yeah, and um, so it's really interesting for the students too to work on sort of live problems um, and get hands on and have that um, industry support as well um, while they're doing their studies. Is that something, Dara, that you're your company or the mega network as well might be interested in from what you're hearing on the ground yeah absolutely as like as i said earlier you know because we're so challenged uh, at the minute in getting people you know we're all looking at different ways of uh, recruiting people retaining people different ways of working people working from home you know the four day a week better life uh, working life balances and stuff so 
you know, any new initiative is this is this is the time to talk to manufacturing companies about any new initiatives because we're we're all at ears and we're very agile and open to any of these new ideas that come that are being proposed. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Dara. And you've introduced the four day working week recently. Um, so certainly that that's that's one measure that you know companies are certainly you've you've taken anyway um to help with that recruitment challenge. So yeah, as, as Dara said, anything that adds on more kind of I suppose resources and manpower um into manufacturing can bring with them a wealth of experience. I think it's very interesting as well that these students are mainly international students from India and China, especially those companies who are maybe already exporting to those countries or looking maybe to export to those countries, this, this is a really good opportunity for, for, that, for those types of companies that might, you know, get better insights and maybe there's language barriers as well that these graduates could potentially help them overcome. I'm just going to, where I see your hand up. And, yeah. uh, while our uh, attendees are thinking about their questions, uh, uh, a question for Catherine, maybe uh, Lindsay. Uh, what is the minimum? Um, uh, my question is about uh, the academic requirement. Uh, so you mentioned students need to pass all their modules. Uh, is there a minimum grade requirement? And my second question, uh, you know, there's uh, some students have delayed the dissertations due to COVID. Uh, do, they, do, the, uh, do they have to uh, complete their dissertations before starting the internship? Um, yes, yeah, so um, for ours, we don't have a minimum percentage um, as long as they have all passed. So that's 50% or above um, is the academic requirement. Um, this cohort, because we had a January start, um, we were able to run their projects from September to December. So they submitted just before the Christmas break and undertook their technical interviews there in January. So exam board for them is now next week. So they are actually all completed um, on that. Uh, so we're just in the middle of collating the marks to get them in for the board. Um, and hopefully all being well, um, they'll be eligible to go out. In some instances, students may have a reset um, to do, but they can do that alongside working. And we're pretty strict on the number there. And it depends on the level of what's required, particularly if it's related to their project. Um, so no projects are wrapped up so far anyway. Right. Uh, and, and you mentioned uh, if uh, students need to have an uh, exam outstanding, uh, they can do that while doing the internship. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we evaluate kind right. of the impact that it would have and um, the amount of work required specifically if it's going to be for their project, if it's a reset around there, um, if they're required to come back and um, to go and undertake extensive lab work and things like that, they'll not be released to placement. Okay, thanks. But they'll know that in advance. Yeah, thanks. Okay, I see maybe just one more question. Yeah, so sorry. Um, would it be possible for Queen's representatives to visit a number of the mega employers to get to meet HR managers and could group student vi visits and could group student visits happen during year one of PG courses to create greater choice awareness? So basically, is it possible maybe to go out um, into and meet a group of manufacturers who might have similar needs or to create a better awareness. I'm sure Queen's could probably facilitate that okay. Yeah, I suppose um, when I say that would be linking through all our kind of graduate and recruitment fairs would be a big one. Um, we do kind of link in with companies on an individual basis. Um, if it was a sense of like a consortium got together and we were going out there, not sure at the minute the capacity to go around several companies um, at once but we can definitely aim to send resources have those discussions um, I think you said linking in with site visits is it is that to potentially bring students to see the companies sorry I might have misinterpreted that um, but we definitely yes. can. you know some companies do offer that um, mm -hmm. and the, the student uptake can vary um, we've had companies before who have laid on a bus, for example, that has come to the, the school, to the Ashby building where our students are housed and has picked up students. Um, the problem is that sometimes the, the numbers can be disappointing, um, depending on how many students you, if, if you, you invite this, this cohort, for example, um, you know, the chances are that some would certainly want to visit. Um, 
and in terms of company or sorry university representatives I'm sure yes as Catherine has said there there could be some potential for that it would just depend when and um, yeah. how many companies perhaps we also um, utilize our employability modules um, and bring companies in through that and have um, panel discussions and different things it's also a good way um, the companies can link in and uh, sort of have access to those students as well and to promote their opportunities yeah when did you say Catherine the recruitment the student recruitment fair takes place um well we have our big one in a uh, October time October, okay. there's a uh, spring fest sorry Lindsay um I don't know if you know the dates on that and then there's smaller specific engineer months that take place yeah they they have sort of went by the wayside uh, unfortunately they've merged into being one um traditionally there would have been several mini furs they are now grouped together and there's one coming up now on the 9th of may that or sorry the 9th of february sorry apologies that was the same last year and um, so the the smaller school specific furs did not happen uh, because they were virtual and um it made more sense for for the companies uh many of whom were recruiting across not only our own faculty but perhaps from other faculties in the university as well so um that's due to come up now as i say and will just be promoted across the university uh, whether we go back to the school specific uh, mini fair that, that also takes place usually in early to mid february uh, that might be allowed to resume from next year but the big fair the three-day event that runs in october would be a good one I, I would suggest for a lot of companies to to support and to to try to attend yeah i think it's important that we just communicate any opportunities out to our companies and we're ourselves and i'm sure mega as well are more than willing to send those opportunities out through our via our easings or through our conversations with manufacturers as well so um we will endeavor to keep the communication lines open uh, and do that going forward as well um okay thanks yeah way has just put that in the chat function um so i'm not sure david did you want to say anything no, no, I was just, I was just, I think you summed it up very nicely there, Mary. So <laughs> just, uh, I think the, the university is clearly open to, you know, if there are opportunities, just do get in touch with us. Um, you know, we will try and work with you in various different ways. You know, if there's just uh, ways for you to engage the current cohort of students virtually or physically, then we, we just have a chat with Catherine and the team and we'll try and work as best as possible to accommodate. Yeah, Thank you. I think it's a great opportunity. So we, we are committed to um to staying in touch and working with you on this. So just can I just confirm the Queen's contact then is Louise then for any of those placement opportunities? Is that right? Yes. That's yeah. It, okay. Yeah. Okay. So listen, it's just coming up to five to one. So if there's no more questions, I just want to, on behalf of manufacturing Northern Ireland, just to, to thank um, Queen's um, and the, all the attendees for joining us today. Dara, do you want to say a few words on behalf of Mega? Uh, yeah, I just want to obviously thank Queen's and uh, for the work that they're, they're putting into this. Uh, I suppose the message certainly from manufacturing in, in the last words that we want to grow or our, our growth has been stented at the minute uh, due to the, the unavailability of, of people. So as I say, we're open to new ideas and <clears throat> any new initiatives that Queens are thinking of. Uh, certainly all the mega companies would be very interested in becoming involved and ultimately uh, becoming closer with uh, Queens University. Okay, thanks, Dar. And just I just want to thank my colleague Connor Doherty for setting up the Zoom links and the, the registration place as well. And um, so thanks for that, Connor. So if um yeah, okay, yeah, very very important. Thanks, Maeve. Um, so listen, thanks everyone. Have enjoy the rest of your day. And as I say, we will send out a copy of the recording to all of the um, registered attendees. Thanks. <laughs>